All right, welcome back to another Harmonious at Lunch. We were supposed to have a guest today, but we do not. So we're, I'm going to do a solo episode, and we're going to talk about uh, the same topic, actually, which was client attention, attraction, excuse me, and retention. And I'm not going to touch so much on the attraction piece of this. I think that these two could be broken down into two separate categories. So what I want to do for this episode is really just talk about client retention and how you maximize your retention um, and think about it a little bit differently than I think a lot of people do in in this sort of industry. So uh, this is going to work across all industries, no matter if you're serving B2B, B2C. At the end of the day, it's all H to H. It's human to human. And if you treat people like human beings, these strategies work because we are all humans who just want to feel like the person we're dealing with actually cares about us. So that's what we're going to talk about a little bit today. Now, just a quick reminder of why we're here. We are here to talk about business as it pertains to the harmonious architecture, the harmonious business architecture. And that is the 10 fundamental disciplines you must master in order for your business to grow, succeed, and scale to any level. These strategies work at the Fortune 100, and they work at a brand new startup that doesn't have a single customer. There is no business where two people exchange money for value where this architecture is not present, and therefore it must be mastered. So if you're watching this video, I just want to point out a couple things. I am redoing my office. I'm creating a little sound studio here. So right now I have styrofoam walls and uh, it's not that pretty, but hey, if you're listening, you can't see what I'm talking about, go on over to YouTube, check out the podcast and of course, subscribe. This should be done in the next couple of days. So I'm excited for that to happen, but let's dive in here. I, we actually talked about this topic a little bit on our Inner Circle preview show last Wednesday. And I think it personally, it deserves a little bit more attention than just the the short, I think, three to five minute segment that we had on it on that show. So really what we talked about was the difference between customer service and customer experience. Now, customer service is often a reactionary element of the business. And typically when you think about big companies, think about like uh, Verizon or T-Mobile, if it's a, 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 a uh, excuse me, uh, what am I trying to say? If it's a, a phone carrier, there we go. Try to get my words under me today. Um, or maybe it's something like Amazon and it's this massive scale of a company. Um, what is customer service? They're they're throwing their lowest paid employees there and they're kind of just hoping that nobody ever comes to them. And if they do, they handle the problem and, and it goes away. Well, that is a really bad way to handle service. If you look at the flip side of that coin, and, P and companies that really master the term of service, think about like uh, the Ritz Carlton or the Four Seasons, like really, really upscale hotel chains. I actually was fortunate enough to stay at a Ritz Carlton recently, just a couple of weeks ago. And my first time, my first experience, and truly it blew me away. I was I was surprised by the level of service. Now I've, I've read books and I've heard stories about it, but I never actually experienced it firsthand. And there's only so much you can get from a book. Another example would be Nordstrom, and I there they have a there's a book on Nordstrom, um, and and there's like I said books on on the Ritz Carlton and the Four Seasons and, and their level of service. But until you actually go there and you experience it, you don't fully grasp what they're talking about. But you also have to have something else to compare that against. So let's think about whatever the worst hotel experience that comes to mind for you is. Just have that in your head. Um, and same thing with, with shopping. We'll take Nordstrom. The worst shopping experience, retail in-person shopping experience that you've ever had, compare that to what a Nordstrom would be like. Now, when I walked into the Four Seasons, uh, this was in New Orleans, if you've ever stayed there. When I got in and I got up to the checkout, immediately what you notice is a calmness. There's no long lines waiting for, for people waiting to check in. There's no angry staff. There was, there was this calm and welcome feeling in the hotel. And just to compare side by side, I am a, a Marriott Bonvoy member. I have Marriott points coming out my ears. I always stay at Marriott's whenever I travel. The Ritz Carlton happens to be a Marriott brand. So it, this was this even for me was out of the norm at the normal Marriott hotels I stay at, like the Courtyard, Fairfield, whatever that kind of level is. When you walk into 
a hotel of this caliber of this luxury and a hotel where you could tell they prioritize the customer experience over the service, it's different and you could feel the difference. So where am I going with all this? You can tell when you go into the Ritz that every little detail was thought about, not from the perspective of serving the customer, but actually manipulating for good their experience and engineering is probably a better word, engineering their experience. So when you go and check in, they have water bottles at the checkout counter. Okay, that's fine. A lot of hotels have that. Um, they also have complimentary um, like vouchers to go to their the bar, which was right next door because I got in late. Um, they had a coffee station set up right outside the elevators every morning. And they had all of these little tiny things that are not individually unique. A lot of places have all these different things, but the way they were laid out and the sequence with which they happened is what made it unique. You could tell someone sat down or a group of people sat down and said, what would create the best full immersive experience for our customers as they walk through their day when they stay at this hotel? Another fun little thing was by the front door, they had a little welcome basket specifically for runners. And it said, welcome back from your run. Please take a cool water on us. And they had iced water bottles at the front door. Well, they know that they've studied their clients and their ideal avatar most likely works out and goes for the run in, or for a run in the morning or at least a walk. And they would appreciate this little basket of cold water. Those little things are how you can tell that the company that you're working with really prioritizes experience over service. Now let's look at the flip side. Customer service, back to the probably lowest level employee, unfortunately, is just there to mitigate a negative situation. And I know that sounds bad, but that's how most companies look at service. They, they think that they can just hope that nothing bad comes through the door of their service department. And then also that when it does, the person on the other end in their company representing their brand is going to have the wherewithal and the skill to be able to handle this angry customer. And a lot of times it is angry. Um, I think if you look at the stats behind customer service interactions, the majority of them are when people are frustrated, upset, or when there's at least a problem with their order, their item, whatever it may be, they're going to customer service because they need help with an issue. So already tensions are elevated. So when you have a less than competent employee, and the only reason I say that is because the, a lot of times these positions are not fully trained or they're not well-trained, they're trained to the bare minimum to get by and then pushed off into the job. When you throw somebody at that level of employee and often someone who's not tied to the mission vision of the company and the core values, and they're just trying to get through their day and they're there for a paycheck, you have a recipe for disaster. You compare the two different levels of service. You, you compare the level that focuses on experience versus the level that doesn't even prioritize service. And there is a vast difference between the two. And that's where things start to develop. So back to the Ritz example, this wasn't uh, with me directly, but I was checking out as another couple was checking out and they had an issue with their bill. So I could tell that they were going through line by line, their itemized bill. And the manager immediately stepped over, was helping them, was dealing with them. And he personally went line by line with them. I have never seen that at a hotel in my life. I have never seen where the manager proactively went over, mitigated the situation, made sure that everything was calm and okay, and no other customers were affected by this. And he took the time to go through the bill line by line and explain exactly what was happening. My checkout experience was purposely long because I was watching this happen. I was so blown away by the experience. I've, I've also been in hotels where people were going line by line through their bill or they were frustrated with something and there was immediately loud voices, the volume was higher, tensions were escalated and you could tell the person behind the counter just wanted the situation over and they didn't really care. So what's 
what what's the difference and what do we do about it? Well, I'm going to give you something that we can do. It's a simple method that I learned about four years ago at this point, and it's called the TAR method. T-A-R. And it's a simple acronym that stands for thank, acknowledge, resolve. If you could use this one little acronym in your customer service, teach it to your customer service team, have a whole training around it and make it part of the core of your company so that your customer service team is equipped with the tools to handle any situation that arises, you will immediately elevate the experience for your customers. And I promise you people will start talking about your customer service in a good way. It'll actually be a selling point for your company. People don't understand that their customer service department often will make or break the whole experience with the company, no matter how good fulfillment was, and how to, no matter how good the product was, no matter how many problems your company solved for your customer, if they have to deal with your support team, your customer service, and it's a negative experience, you've lost the customer for life and you've tarnished your reputation because most likely they're going to go talk about it negatively, either online or in person, or sometimes you don't even know it's just to their friends and family, but no one ever knows about it. So you've lost 10 customers from one. It's so important to prioritize customer service. So what is this TAR method? Thank, acknowledge, resolve. You go through in that order and it's three simple steps. Whenever a customer reaches out to you with a problem, a question, an issue, whatever it is, it doesn't even have to be related to your company. You thank, thank them for reaching out. Thank them for bringing the problem to your attention. This, we want to reinforce positive behavior. So you have to think when you're training a dog or I have three little kids, when you're training little kids, what do you want it? What do you want to enforce the good things, right? You don't want to necessarily yell at them for the bad things because then they're going to keep doing that because that's what they're getting attention for. So you want to give attention to the good, to what you want more of. Well, if a customer has a problem with any part of my service or my product, I want to know about it. I don't want them telling other people before I've had the chance to address and fix that problem. So I want to reinforce that positive behavior. I am so grateful that you came to me with this problem, that you brought this to our attention. So thank you for reaching out. I really appreciate it. A lot of times people, you'll get one of two things. You'll get the, the apologetic reach out where a customer says, I'm so sorry to bother you, uh, but I had a problem with, with my uh, product. Okay. So first we want to thank them and let them know that it's, you know, don't apologize. I'm thanking you. Thank you for doing this. It's not an inconvenience. Thank you. Or you'll get the immediate angry. I can't believe this product doesn't work. I spent so much money on this, blah, blah, blah. Okay. We'll still thank you. Thank you for reaching out. I appreciate you bringing this to my attention. I'd love to figure out what's going on and help you get to the bottom of it. So that's step one. It's very simple. Thank. So we are thanking the customer for reaching out and bringing this problem to our attention. Step two, the A, acknowledge. Acknowledge that they have an actual problem or they're, the reason for them reaching out is valid. This I see a lot of times in customer service and it's the immediate matching of energy. You do not want to match energy in customer service and customer experience. There's, if you've heard in sales, matching and mirroring, that would be a disaster in this scenario, in this context, where if you're in a sales scenario, you want to match somebody's energy and mirror their body language and, and mirror their tone and all of that to show that you're on the same page, right? Well, if someone comes at you angry in customer service and they're, they're up here with their anger and you come up here with their anger, there's only one direction for that anger to go. And that's through the roof. So you want to always acknowledge their problem, de-escalate the situation. I always say, and people make fun of me for this, I think about customer service as a terrorist hostage negotiation. Am I being dramatic? Of course I am. That's what I do. Deal with it. But it is true. You are, you're basically in this tense negotiation until you both know that no one's trying to kill each other and there is a solution. You have to de-escalate and keep your emotions completely out of it. Keep your emotions, your ego, your feelings, whatever, completely off the table so, so far we've thanked and acknowledged. So we are acknowledging that they have a problem, whether they're level 10 angry or they're calm and apologetic about whatever the issue is. You want to make sure that you're acknowledging their concerns, that they are valid and they have every right to feel the way they do, whatever that feeling is. You don't want to say things like calm down or please lower your voice. 
pretend you are just a roll of bubble wrap and nothing can hurt you. You just have to take your, like I said, your ego and your feelings off the table, acknowledge this other person so that you can get their energy level, whatever that may be, positive or negative, down from where it was. Even if they come at you apologetic, a lot of times that's just the start of the conversation. And if they don't hear what they want to hear, they'll escalate to a 10 real quickly. So if we start by thanking and then we acknowledge their concerns, we have now showed that we are on that person's side. So your customer service department, if you can do those two things, then we can get to step three, which is resolve. If you don't do those first two, if you don't thank and you don't acknowledge, you're in a battle and you are in a head to head all out war with this person. They're not going to stop until they win and your customer service department human emotions and egos get in the way, probably not going to stop until they win. And the only thing that can happen is a bad experience and a lost customer. I've never seen it happen any other way. You can't get in a fist fight with somebody and then walk away and be best friends afterwards. That only works in the NHL. And that's not what most people come to buy a product or service from. So we're going to avoid that. So we thank, we acknowledge, and now we can resolve. At this point, your options for resolve should be wide open. You should be able to propose a number of situations because the person is receptive to hearing it. You're not in a battle anymore. It's how can I help you? How can I make this situation better? And a lot of times all you have to do is admit that, hey, we screwed up. Like, I'm sorry. This is not the way that we intended this process to go, whether you're selling a service, a product, a physical product, a digital product, whatever it is. Say, I I'm so sorry. This is not a fair representation or a good representation of our product or, or our company or our service. I would love to make this up to you. And I would start by asking the customer, how can we make this up to you? How can we make this right? A lot of times the resolution, instead of just spit firing solutions or potential solutions, you want to ask them for their feedback. Now, this doesn't work in every single scenario, but a lot of times it'll get you at least 90% of the way there. So what you can say is, um, let's take the hotel example with the couple at the Ritz. If the manager were to say, I am so sorry, we, we messed up this item on your bill. How can we, how can we make the situation right? Well, they could go one of two, two ways. If you've accomplished the first two, thank, acknowledge, they will most likely underplay the solution that will make them happy. And what I mean by this is if you're going head to head and you ask this question, what can I do to make this right? A lot of times people will just, they'll shoot for the moon because they're trying to win. They're trying to beat you and assert their dominance and make sure that they have the upper hand at the end of the conversation. This is a dangerous place to be because what they're going to ask for is 10 free nights at the Ritz. Well, that's a lot of money and we're not going to go ahead and do that. And then we're back in this head to head battle. Instead, if this manager can say, uh, can deescalate. So thank acknowledge we've deescalated the situation. Now I'm so sorry we messed up. What can we do to make this better? A lot of times they'll just say, hey, can you just take that item off of our bill and, and we'll be happy? We'll go on our way. And what does that cost the hotel? Zero, because they didn't actually complete that service anyway. Whatever it was, if it was a bucket of M&Ms, uh, a bottle of champagne in the room by accident, or a cup of coffee, whatever it is, didn't cost you anything because it was a mistake in that scenario. If you've actually damaged the product, then you reship it. You're doing the right thing anyway. It's not costing you anything because the person doesn't want to beat you. They just want what's fair. They want what they originally signed up for. They may say a, a full refund, take it back. I don't want it. That's okay. At least you've saved an angry customer, which is more valuable than whatever income you would have generated from selling that product or service anyway. So these are just a couple of tips, but super important that you understand the thank, acknowledge, resolve. Now that's customer service as especially. We also want to talk about the customer experience. And I actually don't want to talk about that. I want to show you something that really helped me think about this in my last company. And honestly, it's how I grew my company to sell it in five years from working 80 hours a week to scaling, exiting, doubling my revenue three years in a row, and then exiting within three years. It was a journey I couldn't even have imagined. And I, I really do attribute to just a handful of things. And one of the big ones was that I focused on this. I focused on customer service, customer experience, 
and then obviously implementing the harmonious business architecture that we talk about all the time. Um, but I do, I want to share my screen and I want to show you if you've never heard of this book, um, I highly recommend it. It is Never Lose a Customer Again by Joey Coleman. Um, let's find it right here. So if you're watching, this is the link to it on Amazon. Um, and I want to send you a copy too. So for the first three people that go ahead and comment on this episode, um, customer, if you put customer in the comments, I'll DM you, I'll send you a free copy of this book. It was so life-changing for me just to switch how I think from service to experience until reading this book. I never really thought about the customer experience and being proactive. And today, even we've only talked about the TAR method, which is customer service and reactive. But I want to tell you that the real secret sauce to growing your company in terms of customer service and customer experience, and which is client attraction and retention, the topic of today's show, is prioritizing the experience. If you are proactive in the way that you handle your customer experience, if you act like the Ritz, if you act like Nordstrom, you will grow your company and you're not going to have to spend money on marketing or advertising or sales or anything like this. Your customers will spread the word of your company and they will flock to you. Their friends and families are all the best referrals that you want. They're going to talk to other people who want your product and they're going to convince them and sell them on working with you. So again, comment customer on this episode. I will personally DM you and I will, I will send you a, make sure I send a copy of this book to you. The first three people who comment that I will share that book with you. Um, and I hope it has the same impact on you that it did on me. So, uh, let's wrap this episode up a couple of things I want to share here. And that is still, uh, we've been talking about it on the last couple episodes. What if.com slash navigate. If you do not have a plan to grow your business next year, over the next 12 months, we have a drastically new approach on strategic planning. I believe, and we believe at What If, that the traditional way of strategic planning is broken in business. We are modeling a broken system in business. That's what the whole point of the harmonious architecture. And what we want to do is completely disrupt the way you think about um, strategic planning and the way that you plan to grow your business. It is not enough to just say, I'm going to double my business. I'm going to triple my business. I'm going to make X amount of profit. You can't do that. The big companies don't even do that. Why would you try? We have a new approach. It's going to get you to where you want to go in 12 months or less. And guess what? When you register for this workshop over here, it's absolutely free. We have a free five-day boot camp coming up. We're going to make sure you have the plan in place that you need to tackle 2024 and beyond with confidence so you can scale and grow efficiently and profitably. So Thanks for sticking around for this episode. This has been awesome. Uh, another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. We're going to come back tomorrow with another live episode. I know this one was a surprise that we didn't have a guest, but I really hope you you love the content today. Um, and you take that TAR method, teach it to your customer service team. As a matter of fact, teach it to your whole team. It doesn't matter what level they are at. If you could break that level of service, both internally and externally with your customers, your company will win and you will grow. So there's a lot of other things you need to grow your business. We talked about all of them under the harmonious architecture. Um, but this one, at least you can take, it's a little tip from today that you can take into tomorrow, teach your team, pass it along, and we will see you on the next episode of